Hello, my name is Ian M. Walker, and I've been asked to give my first interview. The author I worked with most recently, um, Jean Gill, who wrote the wonderful book, Someone to Look Up To, which I was honored to voice, has sent me some questions uh, as she'd like to interview me for her blog. So I thought perhaps it would be fun to also record it for my channel, since there isn't really a great deal there yet. <laughs> So, uh, here we go. I'm going to read her question and then give you my answer. So, Jean's first question. Tell me a bit about yourself. Where do you live and what do you do when you're not recording a book? Well, as some of you probably know, I'm originally from England, from Wallasey in England. But I live in Los Angeles in the USA now. Um, I've actually been here longer than, I've, than I ever was in my birth country, which is a bit odd. Um, when I'm not recording, I'm usually playing with my dog Bailey, reading, swimming, visiting friends, playing a computer game, uh, going to the cinema, the usual stuff. Second question, can you give me a brief picture of your personal jo journey, 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 as a voice actor, kind of work you do, animations, films, how many books, when started, etc. Um, <clears throat> What did I write? After a long career in IT and one too many layoffs, I started to put serious thought into what I actually wanted to be when I grow up. Um, IT had, never, had been good to me, but it never fulfilled me. I did some traveling, and during that time I came across an ad for a voice assessment. I went along, heard myself recorded in a professional booth for the first time, and a fire was lit in my belly. I just completed my fourth complete audiobook, uh, and I'm working on the fifth. I may also be voicing Einstein the English Elephant in an independent stop-motion film, uh, if that gets going. And since elephants have always been my favourite animal, that's I'm looking forward to that. That'll be fun. I definitely intend to do some voice work for gaming, because I've been a gamer for a long time. Um, third question from Jean is, how do you prepare for recording an audiobook? Hmm, all right. Uh, initially, I read the book, of course. Uh, I try to just enjoy it as a reader would, but of course, I'm already starting to think of the voices as I'm reading it. Um, I'll speak with the author in case they have input, or I need to clarify anything such as words, accents, etc. Uh, and when it comes to time to actually record it, it varies. Uh, sometimes the voices just come to me. Uh, Sirius, in someone to look up to, his voice just came to me. Others, I may try a few out and see which I prefer. Uh, such as Jack, also in Someone to Look Up To. Um, his, the, the voice in the book is his second voice. Uh, I went, I changed uh, partway through, I decided to give him an accent. So that's what I did. Um, Gone, in the Oldest Living Vampire book series, uh, his voice pretty much just came to me. Um, because I, I already loved the series, I already knew his background, um, a little input from the author, and... Yes, it just came to me. Um, some of the other dogs in Someone to Look Up To, they took me a little time uh, to try to distinguish them, give them different voices. Maisie, the, the bulldog, her voice came straight to me because I just thought, that she'd be jowly, so there'll be a lot of this going on in her voice. So that's how I got her voice. My baby brother has some, some bulldogs, so good reference there for me. Um... And wow, I spoke much more than I wrote in my answer there. Sorry about that. Um, if there are a great many voices, as there were in Someone to Look Up To, I usually record snippets, which I may then refer to later on. Uh, just in case uh, there's a you know a gap between when I first start with that character and then come back to it later, or it's just easier to have that reference point. Um, do you network with other voice actors? Are there any sites you'd recommend? Absolutely. I have quite a few peers I'm connected with via social media, um, most of whom I've met through uh, some of the social media groups. Uh, some I know in person now and we're friends. Uh, one was even a roommate for a while. You've probably seen me talking about Jeff Hayes. Fantastic voice actor. Um, uh, there are a great many voice groups out there on social media these days and forums still. Um, so I'd rather not favour any single one. Um, but I'll probably put some links down below of the ones that 
that have helped me the most, so I suppose. Uh, one thing I would mention, though, is that I've always found these groups and my peers to be very helpful. Um, I heard early on that unlike other areas of the entertainment industry, voice is less cutthroat and more about lifting one, other, one another up. And so far, I've found this to be the case. People are really helpful. People are pleasant, for the most part. And they'll even refer you, refer someone to you if they can't book a job or if they're not quite right for something or if they hear of something that they think you'd be good for. Um, that goes on all the time, and it's, wow, it's wonderful. How can an author help the voice actor, producer of his, her book? This was an interesting question. <clears throat> though, 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 though I don't have a great deal of personal experience yet, from what I've read, some authors can be quite hands-on, whilst others, of course, leave it to the narrator. Usually, though, it is a partnership. Um, so there usually is, and there ought to be, some discussion. You don't want surprises after it's all done, for instance. Um, steering clear of too much description of tone, flavour, would be helpful, as it isn't easy, always easy to understand exactly what the author was going for. I mean, they're going to hear it, the voices in their head as they're uh, writing the book. Um, it's not always easy to convey that to someone else, exactly what they meant or how they are hearing it. Um, one thing which would be nice, though, and it's likely not feasible, is if the author would, would, could consider, when writing, just how long a sentence they are writing without any pauses and how that might affect the poor narrator as they attempt to voice it without expiring. Yes, I've seen some very long sentences which, with, without obvious uh, pauses, no commas, etc., and uh, I'm still working on uh, mastering the breath control for some of those. Are there ways in which an author can hinder or even spoil the voice actor's recording of a book? I suppose I would say micromanagement, which thankfully I haven't experienced yet, but I have heard some stories, again, in those social media groups and forums. Uh, changing their minds, causing many re-records. Um, that's, that's probably it. Um, I've been very fortunate so far. The authors I've worked with, uh, it's been a great collaborative effort. Uh, they've mostly uh, let me do as I please, uh, which is a little bit of guidance, uh, and that's been wonderful. If you could wave a magic wand and change something about your career, what would it be? <laughs> Probably what all, what would we all like uh, to be further along, to be more established. Uh, more known, because hopefully such a position, and this probably isn't true, but hopefully being in such a position would lessen the bane of all creative types, the weakening of self-confidence or belief in oneself. Um, I hear this from authors, I hear this from actors, actresses, or all sorts of creative types. <clears throat> uh, self-confidence, that can be a tough one to achieve and certainly to maintain. It doesn't, doesn't always take much of a knock to uh, lower the self-confidence, unfortunately. And so again, I, I would hope that if you are more established, more well-known, more trusted by people, then it would be easier to maintain the self-confidence. Uh, tell me about your working day. Do you work to a routine? Do you use a recording studio, endless cups of coffee or tea? Um, as you can see, I have an audio booth. Um, I created it out of a large uh, five by five by eight foot closet, which I'm very fortunate to have here. It has walls treated with the Aurelex acoustic tiles. Um, it has a mud guard, or an Aurelex mud guard here, um, and thick carpeting and cushions and things, all of which is de are designed to stop echo and to give a flat tone, which is. Uh, what we can more easily work with. Um, despite being from England, I don't, I, I never really did have the endless cups of tea uh, habit. And now I really drink it, or coffee. I mean, I like both. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very caffeine sensitive for a start. Um, I just 
finally finished three years of insomnia. So I do have to be careful with the caffeine intake, but I, I, do, I do like the taste. But since I was a kid, I've always, always drunk water. I love water. And it, <laughs> I think it's paid off because it's very handy in this new career. And of course, as we all now know, it's, uh, it's good for us. Um, I always warm up, though. First, I'll do some singing along to music, usually British radio in my home office, um, as I'm checking emails and social media and whatnot. And then I'll follow the routine of a friend and peer, Amy Walker. No relation, although we do call each other siblings, and we keep, we always say we're sure we're, we're we're related somewhere somewhere back there. Um, immediately prior to any recording session, I'll link her. It's it's a few years old now, but I still every single time I'm about to record, even before I came in here, I use her routine. I probably know it off by heart by now, but still I like to do it along uh, with her video. And sometimes Bailey uh, comes and watches, which is quite funny. And uh, and she. I think especially now because we know Amy so well, we're, we're friends and we and she's been here a few times. Uh, Bailey's so fascinated by, oh, there's that lady I know and she's coming, so her voice and image are coming out of this little tablet. Anyway, going off on a tangent, we Brits tend to do that, sorry. Um, I will link her routine below, though. Who or what has been the greatest help to you as a voice actor? the helpful people of the forum for the software I mainly use, which is Audacity, an open source, fantastic program, um, especially if you're just getting started out, because um, yes, there there is quite a bit of equipment you need, and it can be expensive. I didn't have all this overnight, of course, it's taken a while. Um, <clears throat> and the ACX Facebook group as well. Um, ACX is the company that narrators most of us narrators work for uh that's it's owned by audible which in turn is owned by amazon and acx.com has a lot of uh, helpful guides on getting started so that's a good place to, to have a look at um, but the people in the forums uh, in the facebook group um are very helpful and on the technical side for the audacity the people on that on the forums there have been fantastic patient very very helpful uh letting me send up samples and things to work out technical glitches things like that. So I'm very appreciative of these people and I try to give back whenever I can. What has been the hardest thing for you to overcome in becoming a voice actor? <laughs> I mentioned it earlier, lack of self-confidence. Hmm. Um, this hit me hard over the past year or so, a bit longer, um, due to some personal challenges and events which actually had nothing to do with my voice work, but nevertheless impacted my self-confidence um, to some degree overall but certainly when it came to creating and believing in myself when I come in here and stand in front of the microphone um, the only other challenge would be heat I'm already uh, sweltering in here um, the one thing I've not yet been able to find is a way to silently cool my audio booth ah. And um, and I'm not yet at the level where I can buy a, a whisper booth or whatever they're called, um, which comes with with cooling. So I have a couple of fans that I can run um, that everyone told me would be silent, but they're not. So so they're not on when I'm recording. Um, and I actually have two closets down because there are four closets in this hall. Two closets down, I made a a contraption out of an ice chest, uh, and then drilled uh, through the walls the inter uh, the walls in between and put uh, a long uh, tube through to this to the actual booth and in the uh, ice chest I have a fan that blows into the ice chest uh, which I usually put ice into uh, and that's supposedly because I saw this online somewhere supposedly brings will bring cool air into here uh, and it is almost silent because it's two doors down um, unfortunately the air that does come into here it's not very cool, so I think it's uh, more of a psychosomatic thing to feel like I'm cooling down. Of course, I'm not usually dressed up in a shirt while I'm in here, um, so that's not helping. But uh, those will be the challenges, trying not to expire while I get out, kick out a couple of chapters. If you could pick one character in one of your audiobooks to spend some time with, who would it be and why? 
I went back and forth on this, but I cannot just choose one. I'm sorry, Gene. It has to be two. Because, and I hope you'll forgive me because one of them isn't actually a person, so I'm hoping I can sneak that in. Um, first of all, Sirius, of course, from Someone to Look Up To by, funnily enough, Gene Gill. Um, I feel like I, well, I love dogs already, um, of course, I love all, all animals, uh, and I feel I got to know him so well. I was in his head, of course, I was giving him a voice, and I'd love to meet him and play with him and and just get to know him in a physical manner. Um, secondly, though, I have to say Gone from the Oldest Living Vampire series, which is by Joseph Duncan. Um, so far, I have voiced two of the books, and I'm already working on, on the next one. Well, he's come on, he's a vampire, and he's 30,000 years old. How fascinating would that be, to talk to him? Um, so, sorry, Gene, hope you don't mind that. I had to give two. Tell me about your latest audiobook and why we should all buy it. <laughs> well, <clears throat> my first three books are all of a supernatural bent. And that's fine for me, as my favourite genres are sci-fi and horror. Um, but of course this isn't a realm all readers enjoy. So, due to that, plus uh, having to overcome the aforementioned challenges, uh, to finish this book, someone to look up to, I... I'm going to cherish it. I do cherish it dearly. It's a book which appeals universally, uh, rather than just for the supernatural crowd, for a start, and uh, because it, it became a crucible of sorts for me, um, it's it's special to me. Uh, beyond my very personal reasons, it truly is wonderfully written. It, it really is. Um, that's why it became an Amazon bestseller. Wouldn't you know? Um, there were times I would come out of my booth when I was recording, interact with my own dog, Bailey, and I'd find myself looking at her differently, even asking her if she was doing what I had just read or what I had just learned um, about from Sirius and, and friends. Um, I had to keep reminding myself that this was a book of fiction, not fact, um, and that maybe she wasn't actually training me uh, instead of me training her, as, as the book reveals. <laughs> Um, it takes one into the psyche and thoughts of a dog so well that that's the effect it had on, on me. Sorry about the barking there. That was not only Bailey, but Humero, who is staying with us for a week. What are you working on next? I've already started on the next in the Oldest Living Vampire series uh, by Joseph Duncan. After that, though, I'm going to try to spread my wings a little. I always thought I had to have a huge body of work behind me before I would go looking for an agent or um, commercial work, etc. Um, of course, now I know that that's not true. It does help, obviously, um, but that isn't really true. You can get going right away if you have that confidence. Um, I'd like to go for some computer game or commercial work and perhaps one or two non-fiction audiobooks. I haven't done non-fiction yet, um, but certainly uh, I, I really want to avoid some computer games eventually. The final question from Jean is, where can we find you? Well, the easiest way, and I'm sure we'll both link it, is via my website, which is www.ianmwalker.com, as that has links to all of my social media sites. Um, I... I hope I haven't sweated too much, and I hope you've enjoyed that. And um, I hope you'll have a listen to my work. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please drop them down below to myself or to Jean. And uh, again, thank you, Jean, not only for giving me my first interview, but for believing in me when I didn't believe in me, um, which was quite often this past year, and, and honouring me with giving me the the chance to voice Sirius. It really is uh, something special to me. So thank you very much, Jean Gill. All right, everyone, um, that's it. I hope you'll subscribe just in case I blather on at you another time or uh, we'll post some more videos of Bailey. Um, again, send me some comments down below of what you'd like to see or any questions about voice work. Cheers. Take care.